I went from getting only one medical school interview to well over 20 residency interviews applying to plastic surgery, which is the most competitive specialty out there. And some of those residency interviews were at Ivy Leagues or even a top three country in the nation. So I was very blessed with residency applications. And in this video, I want to take you through some of the lessons that I learned from doing over 20 interviews that I think can be applicable to you going through medical school interviews. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a fourth year medical student applying to plastic and reconstructive surgery. I'll talk a little bit more on this channel about why that was the decision that I made, but I'm going to wait until after match day, just out of respect for the programs that are considering taking me on as uh, their intern. So let's go ahead and talk about the why medicine question that I know that you're going to get. You're either going to struggle to write about it in your personal statement, or you're going to struggle to answer that question whenever they ask you that in interviews. My biggest piece of advice is whenever you write your personal statement, just use that as the prompt, okay? And then your answer doesn't have to be like some superfluous thing or you know something crazy happened to your brother whenever you were growing up and all that stuff like you don't have to dig down that deep what you do have to do is find the true correct answer for why you want to pursue medicine or why I want to pursue plastic surgery and then you have to art articulate that in an interesting fashion so honestly the way the reason that you want to pursue medicine is probably multifaceted it's you know it it is a job where you get to help people and that's cool um, it is a job where you make a lot of money and that's cool it is a job that has like some noble aspects and some social recognition and things of that nature and all of that plays into it and the people that you're talking to they feel all of those factors as well so you don't have to look for something crazy unique just find a way to articulate it well because the thing is if you are finding a fancy way to say I like to help people and I like sciences, then the person that's interviewing you is going to think, oh, well, that's kind of what I like too. Like, I like this person because we agree on this. So don't look too deep to answer that why medicine question. Just look for experiences in your life and stories that you can tell that reinforce why those are important to you. And whenever I'm in an interview, anytime that I know I'm about to say something that's pretty cliche or not unique, I will literally preface it. I will say, this is not unique. I like plastic surgery because of X, Y, and Z, but, and then I start putting my stories in and then I start drilling it home because what they're going to hear is they're going to hear the applicant saying, I acknowledge the things that you like about plastic surgery and I like those too. Here's why I like them. So for the why medicine question, write that as your personal statement prompt and then just be able to tell that story quickly in an interview. Just be able to tell your personal statement story essentially in two minutes and that's it. That's how you answer the why medicine question. It took me a long time to figure it out, but that's it. The second biggest piece of advice that I think um, this is what people are trying to get at whenever they say just be yourself. I, I And I probably should make a whole video on that and the whole why medicine question because there's nuances to both. But I am not like a serious person. Like I'm a pretty goofy guy. And I think that that's a good thing. I think most people are pretty funny people. And so my second piece of advice is that if you are good at riffing, if you are a fun person, just take everything that seems pointed or sharp as a joke. Let me give you an example. So plastics is the most competitive specialty in medicine just by the um, national data. And so sometimes you get asked weird questions like, are you smarter than the other applicants here? Like it's crazy, but sometimes they'll ask you weird questions like that. I don't think you'll get that in medical school, but you will get some weird pointed questions like, why do you deserve to be here? Why should we take you and things of that nature? You can take those on the chin as a joke because the thing is, they already know that you're smart enough to be there, otherwise they wouldn't have invited you, right? Talking about your MCAT score is, is not going to increase the number that's on the page, right? So I always just took that as a joke. You know, I vividly remember I went to one of the top three programs in the country and one of my classmates is doing a research year there instead of straight applying to plastic surgery. One of the attendings said, hey, are you smarter than this student? And I just took it as a joke. You know, I just said, well, yeah. You know, why else would I be here? He's not here and I'm here. So of course I'm smarter than him. Just take it as a joke, right? Because they're just trying to see if you can riff, right? They just want to see if you're a fun person. That's the purpose of an interview is to see if you're personable and you're not going to be a weirdo. And that kind of leads me into the point three 
that I picked up at interviews. You know, you'll hear advice from people, especially for residency, that will say, you know, you'll ask for residence advice and attendings advice, like what should I do with this interview? How should I behave? And things of that nature. And they'll say, just be normal. And your first thought process is, is gonna be, everybody's normal. Like that's what normal is. It's just like the average person, right? And what you're gonna see is that people are not normal. Some people are weird. And you just don't need to be one of those people. So just like relax. You're just talking, right? You're just having a conversation. And sometimes they'll ask you to solve these problems and things of that nature. And you won't always have the solution. They'll give you these weird scenarios in interviews. I remember they specifically they did the, that a lot for medical school. You don't always have to have the right answer. You just need to be able to talk and articulate your thoughts. And you know, if you don't know, that's fine. You just give it your best guess. And then you just be, you have enough humility to say, I'm aware that this may not be the best solution, but I would offer a solution. Here's the solution. I'm open to feedback and learning from the attendings. And I'm grateful to have the medical establishment so that I can spend four years of medical school and five or six years of residency learning from people like yourself that do this professionally. So stuff like that leads into and plays into the interviewer's ego and things of that nature. People like to talk about themselves. People like to acknowledge themselves. That's why interviews are not great is because you're only, you're expecting to only talk about you. But in reality, for someone to enjoy a conversation, they need to talk about them. And so that leads me into my third piece of advice. The quicker you can flip the interview on to them, talking about them, the better. But sometimes you'll get questions like, if you were a flavor of ice cream, what flavor of ice cream would you be? And so you think, you answer the question, and then, what about you, what flavor would you be? And then when they answer it, keep following it up. Oh, that's cool, why, why would you say that? I've never thought of that. That's a way better answer than mine. You know, stuff like that, just joke around with them. My next piece of advice is very mundane, but it's very important. And I actually had a mentor give me this advice, and it's, do not be remembered by what you wear, okay? You want to wear something professional and appropriate, but don't wear like a super loud tie or anything that's like too revealing or anything like that. You don't want them to be like, John, is that the dude that had the dog tie? You know, like you don't want that, right? You, you just want them to be like, John, oh, that's the dude that, uh, he's, he's the one with the business, right? You know, you want them to be remembered, but you want to be remembered by the good things that you have and not necessarily like, oh, he's a bold dresser, <laughs> right? Don't be remembered by what you wear. Dress professionally. I think the only place that you can accent really as a, as a man, I don't know for, for females, but as a man, like the only place you can accent really is socks. And I wouldn't wear anything too crazy for socks. Like for instance, I have these socks. <clears throat> They're green and they have like, Geometry, like the Pythagorean theorem and stuff on them. I just wore them to church. I wouldn't wear them to an interview because they're green, right? It's, it, it could be seen as too loud, but um, I have some black socks that also have like Newton's second law and things of that nature on them. And I wear those because if someone says, oh, you know, physics socks, then I can lead into a conversation of, you know, you can make a joke about like, I never go anywhere without Newton's second law. And then if they ask more about it, you lead into, oh, well, I was a physics major and undergraduate and things of that nature. So that has happened once in 20 interviews. So I wouldn't worry about like picking your socks out too crazy, but like don't wear anything too bright. Just overall, I, I even think a bow tie is a little much. I know that that's like super, super cordial and in certain places, like where I went for undergraduate, a bow tie was a big thing, but like just wear a classic, you know, navy suit, gray suit, just a good looking tie that is not too loud. It just kind of accents you well. You can wear a tie clip if you want. And then some decent socks and a shoes that match your belt. That's, that's it. That's what you need to wear. I think my last piece of advice is the hardest to implement. Maybe if you're not good at riffing, then like the whole be funny thing is, is tough. But this one's really hard for a lot of people. And it's that you have to be confident, you have to sell yourself. And I, I didn't learn this until halfway through my interviews, just how confident or just how appreciative institutions are of you being confident. And it wasn't until I was interviewing at uh, one of the big universities in North Carolina. And they asked me, it was at the end of the interview, and one of the assistant program directors asked me to, he literally said, pitch me, sell me on why you should be resident. We have 400 applicants in two spots. Why should we pick you? 
And so I spoke specifically about the unique things of my application. I briefly touched on the qualifications of, you know, I have a, I have a really good step score, step two score. I have all of the honors that you can get in medical school and things of that nature, which he already knows this. This is on my application, right? But I want to acknowledge it so I can frame it in his mind like he's smart enough to handle it. And then you go into what's unique about you. You go into your pitch and end it with a confident statement. I can't remember exactly what I said to him. I essentially said, you can look at all of my criteria and you see that I have a great step score. I've won every honor that's applicable and possible in medical school. So you know that my floor is an excellent surgeon, but because of X, Y, and Z, this is where you insert your like unique factor, which for me is that, you know, I'm bold enough to start a business, run a business in medical school. I have patents, I focus on innovation, things of that nature. I told him that I have the highest ceiling of any of the students that are in this interview. And then I made a statement that like, it was way more confident and cocky than, than I am, but it was like an out of body experience. Um, I said to him, I don't know that I'm going to invent the next wound vac, but I might, and I'm your best shot for it. The wound vac's a really big thing in plastic surgery. But regardless, I, as, as soon as it like left my lips, I was like, no, that was douchey, don't say that. And then he looked at me for a minute and then he started smiling and he said, if it were up to me, you could start tomorrow. So people appreciate confidence. After that interview, I started being very confident. Of course, you know, like you need to lead with humility and things of that nature. I'm not just telling you to like kick the door in and be like, I'm future Dr. Phillips and I'm God's gift to your program. Like you don't need to do that, right? Because that's just wrong. But if you're good at something, you need to make sure that they know that because they're gonna put you up on a PowerPoint and there you need somebody in that audience to stand up and say, this is our gal or girl or guy. This is who we need in our program. And then people are gonna say, why? And they're gonna say, because this individual is exceptional. We know that they have the accolades and the achievements to complete the rigors of this program, but here's what they can do. So you want, you want your interviewers to be selling you, and the only way for, you to, for them to sell you is if you sell them, and you have to speak with conviction. If you want somebody to believe you, Whenever you go in there and say that you want to be a primary care physician, you better speak with conviction about it. You better have thought about it. You better have stories and examples that can speak to it. But you've got to speak with conviction because otherwise you're just going to blend in. And the thing is, at this level, everybody is super, super smart. Everybody is capable. Most of the people that get an interview in medical school would do just fine if they got accepted into medical school. And honestly, most of the people that get an interview and get rejected from medical school would do just fine if they got accepted into medical school. And I know that because I got rejected twice, right? So I got rejected twice, finally got accepted, and then I won every honor. And I was fortunate enough to meet mentors along the way that helped me craft an application that's competitive enough to get 20 plus interviews in the most competitive specialty. And a lot of that is due to having good mentors, and I should probably make a video on that because uh, none of that would be possible if I hadn't have met my mentor. So this is kind of a weird video. I'm even nervous posting it because I feel like it could come across like I'm being cocky or confident, but I'm trying to impart on you some wisdom that you're going up against some of the smartest people in your country applying for very few spots. And there are a lot of people that get turned away, a lot of qualified people that get turned away every single year, right? I was one of them, I think. So if you wanna get in, you gotta be a dog. I'm not saying a gunner, you should definitely not step on the backs of people that you're interviewing with to raise yourself, right? I, I frequently compliment the other people that I'm interviewing with, the other applicants during interviews. And I think that's, I, I kind of like that, even if it's, maybe it's not good practice, but I think it's nice and I would rather be nice and not match than I would be a jerk and match because I bad mouthed other people, right? And usually the, the attendings in the, that are interviewing you are smart enough to realize that you're doing that, right? So, but the biggest part of being confident is that you have to have the application behind you in order to even be confident. And so that means you gotta check all those boxes that you know need to be checked. And for God's sake, you've gotta have a high MCAT score. That is primarily what I do right here on this channel. The business that I run is all about getting you a high MCAT score as pain-free as possible, as quickly as possible. But there will be pain and it will be slow, but as quick as possible. 
I'm not gonna sit here and try to sell you a course because you already know if you need it. You're just not pulling the trigger for some reason. But do whatever you need to do so that in six months or whenever it is, you sit across a table from someone that's in the shoes that you want to be in, you can tell them confidently, I am hungry and if you give me a chance, I am going to absolutely crush this and here's why. And you can feel comfortable and safe picking me because I have this MCAT score or this personal achievement showing you what it looks like whenever I, or whenever you, set your mind to something. Thanks for watching the video. We primarily talk about the MCAT, especially like now and stuff because it's just, it's MCAT season and I feel like that's our job is to give away as much free information as we can and hopefully that's all you need to study for the MCAT. But if you need paid resources, if you need more help, then you would look to us first because we gave away so much for free. That's our goal of this program. So if you are that person, check out the links in the description. There's everything you need from specific cars help to strategies to us breaking down the double AMC videos to us lecturing through content, the books we've written, everything is in, in the description below. Um, our website will be changing a little bit soon. It's gonna get a little facelift. But I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing. Appreciate the positive feedback that we get. And I appreciate the constructive feedback that we get. Negative feedback or the people that are not in medical school that are, or the people that didn't score what I scored on the MCAT telling me what's not on the MCAT is not as helpful. But the rest of it I really appreciate. So thank you all. Thank you for being excellent. Thank you for helping me craft this application that I'm very proud of because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be nearly the applicant that I am. I wouldn't have gotten to have enjoyed my life during medical school as much as I did. And this is a passion project now that I do not intend on leaving even when I start residency. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.